So there are actually multiple ways of being able to save data in Unity. If you are an experienced developer, you may have stumbled upon what is called player prefs. And player prefs is one of the simplest ways of saving data. So let's take a look at it. Using player prefs is pretty straightforward. It's a class which has a few functions like set int, get int, set float, get float, set string, and get string, and a few others. With player prefs, you can save three types of data types, which are integers, float, and strings. It's quite limiting, right? So what I prefer doing if you want to save other objects with player prefs is to use JSON. Now, what is JSON serialization? JSON stands for JavaScript Object Notation. It's basically an interchangeable format which allows you to convert objects into text which can be readable by humans and vice versa. Unity has its own JSON utility class which can allow you to turn objects into JSON strings which you can then deserialize to turn them into objects back. So as you can see, I have a few functions right here and one of them is save and the data that I'm saving, I'm turning it into a JSON by using the toJSON function from this class called JSON utility and that returns a string which then I save as a string in my player prefs. And when it comes to loading, this is a generic function. So I can return any object, preferably serializable, because if you did not know an object to be turned into a JSON string, it needs to be serializable. And if you don't know what serialization is and how to turn a class or a struct into being serializable, I'm gonna link a video down in the description and you can take a look at that. So all I'm really doing here is I'm getting the string with the key. If you did not know, player prefs, by the way, it takes in keys with value. So it can act like a dictionary. And so once I get that string by using this method, that JSON string, I'm creating an object from it using the from JSON generic method. So let's talk about the advantages and disadvantages of player prefs. But using player prefs is really simple as you can see. But what I do not like is how you have to pass in keys for every single data that you save. What I prefer doing is creating sort of like a middleman class like I'm doing here. In my case, I'm calling it save manager, but you can call it anything else. Basically kind of like recreate the functions of player prefs, just like I did here. And so every time you want to save something, use these functions. Then if you're using a code editor like Rider or Visual Studio, you would see that those functions are being used somewhere. For example, if I try to use the save int function somewhere, for example, right here, just to test. You can see that I have this message right here popping up, one usage. And so in, the, in this way, you'll be able to see where you're actually using those functions that you've created. And in that way, you can ensure to be able to find easily where you are saving what. And this, this is still far from ideal, but it works. So if you did not know, player prefs also has a limit to how much data it can save, but only on WebGL. On Windows, for example, it gets saved on the registry. There is no limit to how much data it can hold. But when it comes to WebGL, there is a limit of one megabyte. So be aware of that. My personal recommendation is use player prefs if you're making a very simple game that will not require a lot of saving or that will not have too much of data to save. Because otherwise, you would be running into problems of managing what is getting saved and Using player press is not an efficient way of saving and loading data for big, large projects. So that's it for player prefs. And now you might be wondering, hey, Dan, what else can I use besides player press? Well, that is a very good question because actually there are a lot of options. What I'm going to talk about first is the fact that most of them includes serialization, like I'm doing here already with player prefs. I'm serializing objects here into JSON strings. But despite JSON, there are actually other formats as well, like XML. XML is similar to JSON, but they, they just have a different format. You can also serialize 
your data into binary, but do not use binary formatter. What I've seen some Unity tutorials recommend is using a binary formatter. If you do not know, using a binary formatter can be dangerous and specifically the deserialization of data using binary formatters. And I haven't personally encountered any problems when I was using it, but even Microsoft, the creators of C-Sharp, are recommending not to use it. So that is already kind of like a big red flag right there. If the developers themselves are recommending not to use it, why even bother using it? And so there is a really great article which I'm gonna link in the description down below, which goes over why binary formatter is dangerous and what type of alternatives there are and what kind of other serializers are dangerous. But with that out of the way, let's now move on to what I prefer using, and that is a file-based approach. I'm still using JSON and I recommend using JSON. So before I actually cover all of this, I'm actually going to go ahead and show you guys an example that I've made using the file based approach that I have. I made a simple 2D map maker. Uh, you can place around tiles like this and uh, you can select other types of tiles by pressing on specific number keys like so. And now once you're done with building a map, you can give this map a name, let's call it Baba Bui and let's press save map. Now, as you can see, the map appeared here on the right. And this list of maps right here is actually all the map files in a specific folder that I have, which I'm gonna later show you. So I have a folder in which maps are getting saved. As you can see, I have other maps right here. There's another one, Dan. I was messing around with it earlier. And I built this other map, then there's another map called my map. And I can load back to Baba Bui. Apart from all of this, I actually made one more cool feature, which I would like to demonstrate. And for that, let's uh, erase our map by pressing space. And then let's, let's build another map, really simple, just real quick. You can notice that I've created another button. And what's really cool about this is that I can export maps into other directories in my machine. So let's call this uh, something like map, map, map. I've already created a map right here. So map is saved. If I go to my desktop, uh, it appeared on my other monitor, but as you can see, it's here, it's right there. If I go back to Unity, I actually made another button for loading maps externally. So if I were, okay, hold on. Uh, let me first clear out the maps so that you can see. Let's try building something real quick. Yep, that works. And now if I try loading back the map, as you can see, it works. I've also created another map in here, and loading that also works. If you're looking to create a system like this one, I'll demonstrate to you how to make it. So going back to our code editor, I'm still in my save manager class, but this project that I've made, it actually includes many other scripts. In particular, I'll show you this map manager. So I have a constant string over here called map folder. This is basically the folder to which all my maps get saved to. This is where all of my maps are saved. As you can see, each one is a JSON file. Then we also have a tile builder class, which just handles the input for building tiles and the actual instantiation of tiles and, you know, managing all of the tiles in the scene. Then I have a map button prefab uh, which I'm using for creating buttons for every single file that I find in that folder. And uh, this right here is the actual scroll view I transform in, in my scene to where I'm actually spawning those map buttons. And then I also have this property called map name input. And what it does is it holds the actual map name that I type into uh, that input field that I have called intermap name. 
So now let's cover the functions that I've made here. So the first one to check out is save map. This gets called by the save map button. And what I'm doing first is I'm creating a map. Uh, and this map is a struct. It's serializable. This is really important. As I mentioned, for a class or a struct to be turned into a into a JSON string, it needs to be serializable. And this map just holds all of the tile data of tiles and tile data is another struct for every single tile that is built and it's also serializable and it contains the id of the tile uh, because we have multiple types of tiles and it contains the position of the tile with a vector to int and so that's all there is to it to the map and then i'm using the tile builder to get all the tile data in my current scene and in that way i create the map and now I'm actually using the save manager class, which I was talking about earlier. And I'm calling the save function and I'm passing in our map along with uh, the path or you know, the folder in which I want to save the map and the actual name of the file. So now let's actually go ahead and view this function. Before that, as you can see, I have two variables at the top save file extension which basically represents the extension so all the files that i'm storing will have this extension this essentially can be anything you can come up with your own extension what i'd recommend is sticking to one extension like json or just that it doesn't really matter but anyways moving on we have another uh, variable right here called the main safe path i'm assigning it to the value of application.persistent data path and what this returns is a data path every time you download a unity game there is a specific data path that gets that gets created apart from the actual folders of the contents of the game in windows it's stored in app data slash local low slash your company name slash your product name that is where it's stored and in fact if you go ahead and pull up the uh, reference for it in the Unity documentation, you can see where exactly that data path leads to depending on your target building platform. So the pros of this is the fact that this changes according to your building platform. So that is why I'm using it right here. Now moving on back to our save function. First, I check right here if the folder to which I'm trying to put my files actually exists. And if it does not, I create a directory. So if we go to this a function right here, what it does is it checks if the directory exists. And directory is, if you did not know, it's a part of the system.io namespace. So it's part of .NET, it's part of c -sharp, and most of this is part of c -sharp, really. Yeah, uh, except the JSON utility class, which is from Unity. And so what I do is if the path does not exist, I log a warning saying that a new directory is created and I create a directory with that folder name. And then let's go back to our save function. So once this is executed, then I convert my object into a JSON string. Then what I do is using the file class, which is also part of the system.io namespace, I call a function called write all text. And so here I pass in where I want to store this file and in our case, we pass in our main save path, which is persistent data path. And then we pass in the folder name and then we pass in the file name with its save file extension. What's important here is to pass in the path along with your file name and the extension. And then you have to also pass in as another argument, the actual JSON string, which you want to save in that file. Once that is done, I debug log a success message. If you're wondering what this green function is, it's, it turns the text into green in Unity's console. It doesn't really matter. Moving on, I've created another function right here called load and it's also now, I'm not using this anywhere in our project, but I'm actually going to share this script, which you can use and mess around with in the description down below. But uh, so what I do first is I check if a folder exists with the name that we're passing to it as our first argument. Uh, and then another argument that I'm passing is the file name, which I'm later on using. If the folder exists, 
then I'm reading that file. I should also probably do a file check, but this anyway will throw an error if the file that we're referencing to here does not exist. As you can see, the key terms to understand when it comes to uh, using files are read and write. So if in PlayerPress we have get and set, when it comes to files we have read and write. If when saving I use file.write all text, in loading I use read all text. If you haven't noticed already, loading is kind of the same as saving, it's just a process that's backwards. We are instead reading from that file and then we are retrieving the object from the JSON string that we got from the file. And if everything is correct, everything has been done successfully, I print out a log with a success message and I return the object itself. Then I also have another method right here called load all from directory. This does pretty much the same thing as load but it returns multiple objects because it searches for every single file from that folder. I'm not really using it, but I actually made another version of it in here where instead of just returning an array of objects, I also return an array of names. I'm returning all those as a tuple and that's pretty much it. That's all there is to this a save manager class. That's essentially how I'm handling all the saving and the loading. Or oh, what I haven't mentioned is where I'm using this load from directory with names. When I'm actually loading all the maps, this is where I use this function right here, as you can see. I'm calling load all maps at the start of the game. When I save a map, I also call it here. So that's pretty much it for those two basic functions. Now let's move on to how I was able to show a file browser to open up in Unity. And that is by using an external package made by someone else. I'll leave the GitHub page to this package in the description down below. But essentially what it does is it allows you to open up a file browser. It is cross-platform. Regardless if you're building to Windows, Linux, or Mac OS, the file browser will show up. And if I'm not mistaken, it even works on WebGL. But the developer mentioned that it hasn't been really tested well, so use it at your own risk. The documentation of this package is documented pretty well and you can check it out for yourself. As you can see, I'm basically using its safe file panel method right here, which returns a path which the user selects. And then I pretty much do the same thing as I did for the saving right here. And when it comes to the loading, there's another function called open file panel. And it's a little bit different because it actually has a multi-select feature right here, which you can pass in as true or false. So if it's false, you can only select one file, of course. And you gotta be careful because this function right here actually returns a string array. And you gotta check if that array contains any elements at all, because the user can close the file browser without selecting any path. So you really gotta validate all the actions of the user when it comes to using a file browser, just like this. And what I'm doing here as well, if you've probably noticed, is I'm passing out an out parameter name. And I'm doing this because I'm checking if the name actually exists in my map manager. So here is actually where I'm calling all these file browser functions. Here I actually use the out parameter map name to check if it's null or empty. And if it is, I basically log an error with my own text logger, which shows a text at the center of the screen. And if the string is null in this case, which is the actual name of the file, then that means something went wrong. And I'd really recommend using this standalone file browser package if you're planning to add something like mod support into your game, where you want users to be able to load mods easily into your game or when you want to just save something or if you're not making a game but more like a tool where you want to export some models some pictures then you can use this package it is perfect for you to use so that's it for this video today i hope you enjoyed watching it and i hope you learned something new i hope it was very useful for you and i will see you guys next time peace out